hello it is Wednesday it is the 6th I'm gonna read from this um, it's called letting God by a Philip Parham I just recently had looked it up on Amazon and it's $52 Wow for this for paperback so I think it's pretty popular on the back of it it says letting God is the first book of meditations to explore the theme of AA's 12-step program within the context of the Christian tradition the book offers a meditation for each day of the year each focusing on one of the 12 steps or one of AA's slogans, like <clears throat> let go and let God, <clears throat> expect a miracle, and live and let live. Each day's reading begins with words from scripture, reflects on their meaning for recovery, and concludes with a brief prayer. Live and let live is a phrase from the Lord as well as a key slogan of all 12 step programs. Parham writes, all recovery is a process of being delivered from the clutches of control. Self-control and other control lie at the heart of our illness. Lord Jesus, help me to be willing to let it be and to turn loose my urge to control others. <clears throat> let your spirit of acceptance be upon me. Keep me from manipulating and planning my results. Amen. A. Philip Parham, an Episcopal priest and counselor, serves on the board of directors of the National Episcopal Coalition on Alcohol. Parham holds a doctorate of ministry degree from San Francisco Theological Seminary, where he did his dissertation on the pastoral care of married couples and families affected by alcohol. He has written many articles on alcoholism and private published the church and alcohol a resource manual I bet all of his information is very helpful and this book is copyright 1987 I believe which is the year that my oldest yep copyright 1987 my oldest read this book also she found it when I think she was in college she found it in my house and, and read it. So she found it inspirational also. So, and I got my little sheep out again because <laughs> we are in the chapter of the Bible about the things that were lost. And rejoice with me for I have found the coin which I had lost. Luke 15 verse nine. <clears throat> a three-year-old wandered away from the family campsite at a national park. The family searched, then more and more families joined in. Soon the entire park population was involved. After one day of looking everywhere and just before losing hope, the child was found by the father. After being tucked into bed, the rescued child said, Gee, aren't y'all glad you found me? If anything is made clear by Jesus about our Heavenly Father, it is how much he rejoices over our rescue. Jesus illustrates this by the stories of a lost coin found by a housewife, a lost sheep found by a shepherd, and a lost son found by his father. God is like that. Jesus there says there is much rejoicing among the angels in heaven over just one rescue. If any place brings such rejoicing by God in heaven, it is a 12-step meeting or a church gathering. When the lost are found, God is around. And his joy surrounds us. Naturally, we are prone to thank some other sources for our rescue. Luck, our resourcefulness, determination, our good sense. Yet it is God who discovers us uncovers us, cleanses, and cleans us up. 
When we find clarity in the midst of confusion, doubt, and fear, we have found God and he has found us. Dear God, to know you rejoice when I am found is such joy to me. Help me to never stop looking for and finding you and myself. Amen. I hope you all have a good day. Um, next week, next Wednesday, I'm going to be going live at 9 p.m. Central Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, on the 13th. I'm just going once a month, and that is working good for me. <laughs> so I will see you then, but I will, before then, see you tomorrow, and I will see you later for the poem of the day. Mwah! Love you. Bye.